I did not honestly expect to kind of obtain as much information as I did. It's incredible. Uh, like from the very beginning, it's messy, complex, mind, ideas all mixed together. And, uh, and then it goes to, uh, we can show a very cl a clearer path for our future and to start our business. It's utterly invaluable to us all and we've learned so much. Um, I, can, I can say that this has been one of the most rewarding experiences I've had at Deakin and I want to say thank you. Thank you everyone today for joining us for our Startup Accelerator launch day. Entrepreneurship at its core is about solving meaningful problems. And right now, we've got the camera on, I guess you can see all the community members are here. There are 95 of you. And we're very delighted to also have our Vice Chancellor and our Program Founder, Sveta Venkatesh, with us. This year, over 111 teams applied, which consisted of 256 founders for our accelerator accelerator program and we've gone ahead and funded five teams we have a this year we had a blind selection process and are committed to empowering diverse founders our team and startup coaches are a, a brilliant team of women and we have founders from across the globe universities are a hub for entrepreneurship it's a ground for collaboration and the environment to help you succeed as a program, Spark Deacon has come very far since inception in 2015. We hope to continue to grow significantly and we're currently developing our strategic plan for growth over the next five years, over the next five years that we'll be presenting to the university in the coming months. So what to expect today? So today isn't about sales pitches from startups. It's about the stories behind what they do and why they do what they do. It's about the problems that they are obsessed with solving and the solutions that they are developing and what, what drives them behind these ventures. Startups are hard work. Founding a business is really hard work. And in the current climate of COVID, entrepreneurship is incredibly important. Our program to date has created 300 part-time and full-time jobs and hundreds more, of con hundreds more contract jobs. And today you'll get to hear from these five founders who no doubt in the future will expand and grow their businesses and be creating further jobs. So what's the accelerator about? Look, it's about community, it's about generosity, it's about accountability. And of course, it's about the perks. Those perks being $10,000 of funding from Deakin University to all these Deakin founders um, and over $50,000 of value from our community partners. That's from Zero, from Google for Startups, from Amazon Web Services, from Airwallex and from HubSpot. This year, we're really excited to have two social enterprises and a thread of social impact that unites, I think, all of our founding team members. And I want to draw from the City of Melbourne Startup Action Plan, which mentioned that the beauty of Melbourne startup and entrepreneurial community is our motivations often lie beyond just creating the next billion dollar business. Our community is raw, it's collaborative and has a strong social purpose. We're home to Australia's largest collection of social enterprises, including Keep Cup and Thank You Group, whose co-founder Justine Flynn is also a Deacon alumni, I should mention, and Movember. And our for-profit enterprises in general are equally committed to creating positive social outcomes. And I think this thread from that action plan is also echoed in our program today. Um, now, do you will have a short video played by a vice chancellor who's also joined us today, actually. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome to the launch of the 2020 Spark Deacon Accelerator Program, our key entrepreneurship program. I'm Ian Martin, Vice Chancellor of Deakin University. At Deakin, we've built a culture of innovation and excellence, and we make significant contributions to our local and global communities. Recent events have demonstrated how important it is to work together as a community, to work towards innovative and entrepreneurial solutions, to create opportunities even where none seem possible. In fact, now more than ever, it is creative approaches that our country and communities need. An ability to create jobs for the future, to respond to emerging challenges, and to anticipate what is yet to come. The impact we create must deliver benefit and progress across society, prioritising equity and opportunity. That is why the Spark Deacon Entrepreneurship Programme is such an important initiative. To date, we have supported 68 founders and funded 28 startups who've serviced over 15,000 customers. These startups have created over 300 full time and part time jobs. Spark is designed for students, staff, and alumni and has a strong focus on building connections with the entrepreneurial community outside of the university, particularly the Melbourne startup ecosystem. Spark provides funding connections, mentorship and expertise to accelerate startups and social impact businesses. It sponsors and supports creative talent to collaborate together and take ideas to market. This year we've been challenged to reimagine some of our programs, including the Accelerator, which is now running completely online. In the spirit of innovation and opportunity, these new circumstances have enabled us to explore new possibilities such as being able to involve founders internationally. Today's launch showcases the inspiring stories of startups created by Deakin students and alumni and the impact they are making in the world. I would like to offer my congratulations to all the teams that have been selected to take part this year. Sammy Tronics, Juck Surf, Lemonade and Social Impact Ventures, Go Kindly and One Love. We have two Geelong-based teams and three based in Melbourne, with co-founders in the USA, Indonesia and India. From a 19-year-old student who's won international robotics competition sponsored by NASA, working on an EdTech startup, to Geelong researchers developing recycled carbon fibre surfboards. I hope all of you can get the most out of the Spark Deacon program, and I look forward to seeing you and your ideas evolve and find greater success. Thank you so much to our generous mentors who donate time and share their experiences. You're the link between ideas and innovation. You're the ones who help convert creativity into creations that impact lives. Best wishes and I hope you enjoy today's launch. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you to our Vice Chancellor for that generous message. Now, just quickly, before we dive into meeting our startup coaches and the startup teams, I just wanna share that we're doing a little selfie competition today. So if you've tuned in today, you can take a selfie and use the hashtag 2020 Spark Deacon and tag in at Spark Deacon on Instagram and Twitter only. Uh, and we have some prizes and prizes include wine donated by local Geelong Archive Wine Bar. We have two, two bottles of capture and pillows, ethical pillows from Go Kindly, who you'll get to hear from today. They're one of the social enterprises. So that's just taking a selfie with you on the Zoom call and sharing it. And we will be looking through these throughout the call and we'll be picking the winners by the end of today at 6.30. So I'd like to now introduce Lisa and Olga. Lisa Galbraith is passionate about empowering female founders. She's also an angel investor at Scale Investors. She's one of our startup coaches this year that's regularly working with the teams. And we have Olga Hogan. Olga Hogan used to work at Deakin University and that's when we've met. She's been a mentor to the program for many years and continues to be so, and has kept strong ties with us and the team. Um, she's also very passionate about empowering founders and helping them connect with investors. So I'll pass over to Lisa and Olga. Thank you, Daisy, and good evening, everybody, and welcome. Olga, I have to say I'm really excited when I look forward to what's happening this evening. We've got a fabulous group of entrepreneurs. We've got some great business ideas, and these people, I can tell you, they're passionate. And they're, but they're not only passionate, they're keen to listen and to learn and understand 
other alternatives. And that's what I'm really enjoying about coaching this group. They're open to new ideas. I really love getting people started on their journey and getting them underway and opening their minds a little bit more to other alternatives and other possible solutions to problems and opportunities that come up with them. So Olga, what gets you out of bed with this um, startup program? I really like um, coaching these startups teams because I feel like by like we can help them to realize the full potential, something they actually don't even know they can do yet. And also helping them to actually start selling their products to see a founders uh, when they sell their first product, find their first customer. It's really, really satisfying. So yes. And added bonus, you actually get to meet, or I get to meet really interesting people like Laura from Go Kindly. So she's an avid bike rider. And a few years back, she done four weeks solo bike riding around Australia. How cool is that? Wow. I've also learned some pretty interesting facts about the uh, teams that I've been coaching. So I don't know if you know this, but both the founders of One Love Australia are in long distant relationships. Very, very challenging in the COVID time, but I can tell you Olga keeps them very focused on the business that they're trying to build. So there's lots of really interesting things for people to learn. Um, so Daisy, let's get this show on the road. Awesome. Thanks, Lisa and Olga, and all for the generous work you guys do. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce our very first time. You'll be hearing from Laura and David from Go Kindly, who uh, have a social enterprise around ethical bed pillows, and they are also supporting women experiencing homelessness. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm David. And we're Go Kindly. Did you know that the most person most likely to ask for help at a homeless service is a woman aged between 24 and 34 with a child? On any night in Australia, there are 49,000 homeless women. We find these statistics overwhelming, and after seeing an increasing amount of homelessness in our city, we decided to do something about it. We created Go Kindly to give people the opportunity to make an everyday purchase which had extraordinary power. We create ethical bed and bath goods and our signature product is a bedroom pillow. We donate 50% of the profits to our partner charities who support women in need. We've had a combined 35 years of business and finance experience and we're using our skills to build a compassionate business. The Kindly Pillow is comfy, provides great neck support and makes the world kinder. For every four pillows sold, we can provide one night's accommodation to a woman seeking housing. We do this by supporting two partner charities, Wishin and Women's Housing Limited. These charities are on the front line supporting women in need by providing emergency accommodation and also providing long-term housing options. Because of our commitment to making the world kinder, we have no single-use plastic and we ensure fair wages are paid throughout our supply chain. Our product is actually made right here in Melbourne. building a profitable business which makes the world kinder. We believe that profits should be reinvested to drive social change. Every night 49,000 women experience homelessness and we know that post-COVID this number will grow as women escape controlling and abusive relationships. We want every woman to have a safe place to sleep. I ask myself how can I make a difference to so many homeless people that I walk past? Well that's why I help create a business that is compassionate and provides ongoing support to our most vulnerable people. I'm driven by my own life experiences. I've experienced homelessness as a young person and come from a background of what I call difference or what other people may call disadvantage. I believe it's important to give back because I know how easily women can find themselves in vulnerable situations. I've worked in many commercial roles inside businesses and it saddens me that many profits are not used to drive social change. Go Kindly was launched in 2019 and right now we sell four pillow styles. So far we've donated $8,000 to charities supporting women experiencing homelessness and we've funded 80 nights accommodation. On top of that we've donated 120 pillows to women in need. Our goal is to end homelessness for women in Australia. 
We want to be the pillar of choice for all Australians. We want to inspire other businesses to support grassroots social change. One day we'd like to be a big call. We want to provide meaningful employment to people of difference or diverse people. We want to sell a shitload of bed and bath goods and pillows. So we're really excited to be part of the Accelerator. We're looking forward to fast tracking our digital marketing capability and also too we'd love your support to buy a pillow from Go Kindly that has extraordinary impact and make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. A very, very important cause and it's great to have you part of the team. I have to suppose the first question I need to ask you both, why pillows? Hi, thanks for having us. We're very excited to be here and we're loving this journey that we're on with you. So thank you. Uh, why pillows? Well, it was always about offering people a way to help women experiencing homelessness and finding products that had a connection in some way to women and to safety and to sleep. Um, we also wanted our goods to be ordinary. We wanted them to be things that people would buy again um, and that they would need to come back to us every few years. Plus, we were looking for something that was light and pillows are light and easy to ship. Good practical reasons. I also noticed that you selected two, two charities, Wishin and w Women's Housing Limited. Can you explain why you picked those two charities? Uh, yeah, sure. It was important to us that we supported um, the cause in two ways. One in emergency frontline housing and the other in longer term secure affordable housing. And the two charities we selected do that. So when women are first leaving family violence, and that's one of the largest drivers of homelessness for women in Australia, they usually lead, need help immediately. And they turn to um, providers like Wishin, who is one of our charities, for immediate help with shelter and food and everyday kind of needs. And then in the weeks and months that follow, they, they really need longer term housing, which is where Women's Housing Limited plays a role. So they build affordable social housing um, units. And we thought it was important that the two pieces of that um, were something we were able to support. Because one in three women get turned away from services for emergency housing because of funding constraints. Um, and they then live on, on, on couches and in cars. So emergency housing isn't a long-term solution, which is why we, um, we also um, support Women's Housing Limited. Um, I guess what people don't realise is that emergency housing is more about putting people into motels and into backpackers, often with children, um, where there's no cooking facilities and no laundry facilities. So emergency housing is, is important and the work that Wish, Wish and does is very, very important in the early days, but there also needs to be longer term secure affordable housing. So um, that's a bit of the background about why we chose those two charities. Great, thanks very much. And I can see that we've got about 120 participants on the online tonight. And I'd like to put out a call to all of you. If you buy a pillow, if we all bought a pillow tonight, we would be probably housing enough accommodation for a month. So I'd like people to think about that before they buy, before they log off this evening. So Daisy, over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Lisa. Remember, you can also win one from our competition. Um, next up, we have uh, we have Jux Surf. So these are two, three aerospace engineers and chemical engineers who you might have actually seen in the newspaper recently. They're building the world's first recycled carbon fiber surfboards. Now you get to watch their video and then you get to hear about them. What do you get when you combine aerospace engineers and chemists with over 10 years of experience in carbon fiber research? Teaming up with local surf communities. Working together for one goal. to provide the ultimate surfing experience. Jacques Surf. Hi there, my name is James Randall and I'm a PhD student from Deakin University. 
One of the things I really want to get out of my PhD was see my hard work go into an application that would be useful to people. And I'm proud to say that the help of my friends, Philip and Andreas, I believe we can get there with the manufacturing of surfboards. Hi, I'm Dr. Philip Sochevsky and founder of Jack Surf. I completed my PhD in aerospace engineering at Deakin University. And now with the help of my mates, I'm trying to combine aerospace technology and carbon fibre and uh, place it into the surfing industry here locally in Geelong. Hey, my name is Andreas Hendelmeier. I also studied aerospace engineering in Germany at the University of Stuttgart. Currently, I'm working on my PhD at Deakin University in, in Geelong. I live on the beautiful surf coast in Turkey next to Bells Beach. And during my PhD, I got super lucky to meet these great guys, Jimmy and Philip. And together we started our company, Jack Surf. So what binds the three of us together is that we've all completed or under the final stages of completing our PhDs in carbon fiber research. So together, what we're trying to do is combine organic chemistry principles as well as aerospace grade uh, engineering principles to solve some problems that are facing the surfing industry at the moment and do it with our uh, material of choice, carbon fiber. I like to think of myself as the glue that holds this group together. And that's because my job is to do chemistry on the sources of carbon fibers, interact better with the resin, making a stronger and more durable board overall. Carbon fiber surfboards have several issues. One is carbon fiber surfboards are too stiff. Also, delamination could be an issue. So using our expertise in carbon fiber, what we're trying to do is solve these problems. We can create a stronger board, a lighter board, as well as one that is more delamination proof than anything on the current market. And on top of that, we can create it for a price that is the same as a current e-glass board. Using all of this information, we think we can change the surfing industry forever. So we're Jack Surf, and we hope you can join us on our journey. Hi, Andy. Hi, Olga. Hi, Philip and James. Hi, how are you? Hello. How are we? Hi, everyone. Good. <laughs> great planes and cars in your video. Really great footage. <laughs> Thank you. D Deakin is very strong in carbon fiber research and innovating for a circular economy. And it's so great to see the students demonstrating what they learned with cool companies like you. Jack surf. Two of you are aerospace engineers. So why surfboards? So, so good evening, everyone. And one thing which really motivated us to make surfboards was we had a conversation with the younger generation down here on the surf coast, and they told us nothing changed in, well, several years in the surfboard industry. And we thought we could change something. Yeah. And uh, hi everyone, I'm Phil, and building on that as well, out of all of Australia, uh, Geelong is the only place in all of the country that makes carbon fibre. On top of that, it feels like living on the surf coast, everyone seems to be a surfer, and we wanted to apply our expertise in carbon fibre and our research expertise into a real world application, so why not Geelong, why not surfboards? It seemed like a great fit. Why not carbon fibre? Yes, absolutely. So when I Google carbon fiber surfboard, the first result is an article from two years ago uh, named the death of carbon fiber surfboards. What is different about your boards? Yeah, so that's a pretty rough kind of article to try and tackle, but- Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. So the answer to that is, there's a reason carbon fiber has been used on airplanes, why it's been used in a lot of other sporting applications. And the reason it's just a superior material. So current surfboards, when they were tried to be converted to carbon fiber, were too stiff. So it just didn't feel like a surfboard. But with our expertise in aerospace engineering and industry applications and chemistry, we can make the board feel the exact same and just be a stronger, lighter, and better performing board. So it's just when it was tried, it wasn't done right. And we can do it right. Fantastic. Thank you, team. And I hear that you have already received your first sale order from Hawaii. Congratulations. Well <laughs> Thank done. You. Thank you. 
thank you. <laughs> over to over to you, Daisy. Awesome. Thank you, Olga. Congratulations. Yeah, they recently got their first sale. They recently got a bunch of press. So it's exciting to see the momentum shifting in week two of the program already. So we've got a little, little two minute ish break. Um, so if you want to grab a drink, if you're feeling thirsty, you can do that now. I thought I may uh, as well remind you about the competitions. We've got some submissions already from Confidant. Your Bryce, yes, Bryce, you're, <laughs> we've got a submission from you. Dan, Dean, one of our mentors. Um, Dash Boys as well. And Michael Jasper, thank you. I'd love to see some more submissions from women <laughs> as well. But thank you so much for taking part in the competition so far. Um, these are fantastic submissions already. Remember, the prizes are archived wine bar wine and pillars from both wine. Thank you. Cool. So I wanted to start with uh, where this sort of journey started. And you'll get to hear from Sveta Venkatesh. She's also in the corp. She's made a video for us. She's the founder um, of this program. But I wanted to start with um, my journey in getting interested in entrepreneurship. And it started when I was 19 years old. I was volunteering in Thailand with refugees and asylum seekers. And I had absolutely no interest in entrepreneurship. I was, the best politest way to put it, a left-wing tree-hugging hippie. And I thought everything that was wrong with the world was business. It was part of my worldview. And my parents had sort of taught me any self-respectable person would, would, you know, being South Asian, like be a doctor or be this. And I had no interest in, no one in my family had done business or entrepreneurship. And it was when I learned um, about this group of Sri Lankan women um, who were, have been in Thailand for about five years. And long story short is we ended up developing an entrepreneurship program for them. And I put my hand up to volunteer to get involved in that. And that was the first time I saw this metaphor come to life. You've probably heard it. Um, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, you'll have food for the rest of his life. And that was the first time that I saw these women gain these very, very practical skills that would enable them to earn their own income. But on top of that, I saw this sense of dignity and this sense of hope. And I saw that they, what the skills that we were giving them and the practical links and connecting them to markets to purchase the goods and the artisan things they were making, I wanted to learn more about it. And that was where my entrepreneurship journey started. And I came back to Deke and I was a student here as well, started a club around social enterprise. And then I met Sveta Venkatesh. I dabbled in a few startups um, myself as well. So that's just a little bit on um, my journey around the startup space. And now we are going to go to our um, next team, which is Lemonade. So Lemonade, ours and Casey and Chris are behind Lemonade and it's the home for experiences. They've also been working with charities here in Australia and abroad. A couple of Child Rights for You, it's an NGO working towards child welfare and lowering infant mortality in India. And Bye Bye Plastic, an NGO focused on eradicating single use plastic from nightlife and the festival industry. As I mentioned earlier, this sort of social thread is through all of the companies that we've been funding this year. We're really excited about that. Hi, I'm Ars and I'm one of the co-founders of Lemonade. Lemonade is an experience-driven e-commerce platform that empowers creators of any genre, be it product or experience creators, to create their own lemonade stand and host experiences of any scale, be it intimate offline events, all the way up to virtual festivals. We created this platform to empower local artists and creators to build their own global communities and make a living out of their skill and hobbies, inspiring them to be their own boss while monetizing what they like to do. The premise is to disrupt the creator economy. We want to do this by allowing anyone to create anything, anytime, anywhere, enabling creators to collaborate with other creators and grow communities as a collective. This means one can host an event, tie in as many products or promotions, add as many co-hosts as possible, assign each of those co-hosts a percentage split, and host virtual stages within the experience if it's an online-only event. All of this is live already, and people around the globe are using Lemonade in a way where even us, the core team, couldn't think of. For example, an animal rescue center in India recently used Lemonade to host a virtual puppy adoption drive. Yes, we cannot wait to disrupt the events and creator economy here in Australia. I feel it's one of the greatest markets to be in for something like this, and given the current situation across the world, people are dying to try out new things from the comfort of their homes. 
Our vision is to have experiences of all sorts hosted on Lemonade, be it intimate living room gigs all the way to virtual beer tastings and music festivals. How awesome is that? It's time for you to come and join us now. Let's make Lemonade together. Thank you, Arts. So uh, the Arts is here. We've got uh, Chris and we've got Casey. So welcome. So thanks for giving us a little bit of a glimpse into your new social platform. And I'm sure there's lots of people sitting in the audience today who will be signing up as soon as this is finished. So let's start with where, how you all met and where you're all based. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so me and Casey met in China. Uh, both of us worked for a smartphone manufacturer, OnePlus. Um, Casey was the global brand manager and I was the design lead of the company. Uh, we connected over not being able to meet other like-minded people apart from the 25 expats that we already knew from the global team. And that was one of the many reasons why we created Lemonade. Um, Chris and I met online. He joined one of my other uh, ventures or community projects, whatever you want to call it. Um, I still haven't met him in real life, but we work together as if we grew up on the same street. So it's been a good journey. Casey, Casey actually met Chris before me. So that's, uh, I'm kind of jealous considering that I know Chris longer. <laughs> so uh, you're in Melbourne and Casey is in New York. Casey is in Boston and in Boston, right. is in the Netherlands at the moment. So quite the global team already. So the, this platform, a platform creative for creatives, for, for important brands and small and large brands and for fans. It's a very interesting idea. So tell me, was there a moment when you thought, yes, this is going to work? Casey, you wanna you wanna answer that one because you're closer to this. It happened. Right? Um, yeah, it was actually so. My living room was the first lemonade stand in Barcelona, um, and um, we hosted an artist who was not who's about to be evicted uh, from his apartment because he wasn't able to make rent. He used to live on a house. He lives he still lives on a houseboat. Um, and essentially, we did one experience with him in. Different living, different living rooms or lemonade stands over over the same month, and he was able to make twelve hundred euros and pay back his past due rent and his uh, current month's rent. Where essentially the whole ethos of creators being empowered to create anything, anytime, anywhere, and monetize communities on demand was kind of the power. The power of it, for one, essentially can translate through technology as power for, for mil or to empower millions of creators. So that was, I guess, our first aha moment of that this could work. Fantastic. And I think right now with the, the globe basically locked down, this is a perfect time for an application like this. And the fact that you can pivot in the way that you've done is, is a testimony to the creativity of the team and to the application. So I would encourage everybody to download the Lemonade social app and get on board. Daisy. Awesome. Thanks, Lisa. Um, next, just a quick reminder, so there's some great conversation going on in the chat. If you have a question specific to the startups, just use the Q&A function. And if you have any, like, you want to show some love, the chat's great for that. But there's a Q&A function um, where you can ask a, chat, a question and it'll be answered. There's two things there because it's a Zoom webinar. All right. So next up, we have Sammy Tronics and the co-founder, which is Samuel and Nicholas and Manjeev. Now, Samuel actually came to visit me. Uh, he's an international student from Indonesia and he's only 19 years old. And I remember the first time I met him at Deakin downtown and he said to me, I chose to study at Deakin because of the engineering facilities and Spark Deakin. And I think you said, it looks like Y Combinator. And that was the biggest compliment we got. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And then I looked at the, some of the stuff he was working on and it was so inspiring. So we're gonna play his video and then you're gonna to get to learn a little bit more about him. <laughs> Wait, pause, we'll get there. But first, let me tell you our story. 
I'm Sammy, and this is me when I was younger. Well, a lot younger. Ever since I was a kid, I always liked to daydream and imagine different things. I started inventing random stuff out of cardboard boxes and styrofoams. When I was 14, I started learning more about electronics, and this brings new possibilities to create the things I have imagined. An example of that is when I had the idea to put the technology behind wind turbine into a bicycle wheel so that you can generate electricity and charge your phone at the same time. Following that, I have made many other things ranging from underwater to flying robots. I've also been an active member of the DIY and creator communities and have participated in tech events. Now, let's talk about Nicholas Patrick, the genius 17-year-old who has won countless of mathematics and programming competitions. Since Patrick was really young, he has always been fascinated with the beauty of mathematics. Mathematics is all around us and it should be something really interesting. But unfortunately, oftentimes it is not taught in an engaging way and not enough practical projects making it a tough and boring subject to learn. Patrick wants to change this and make people be aware that mathematics should be fun. Joining us in our epic journey is Manjeev Sukram. Just like me and Patrick, he likes to create stuff where it is cooking or building hardware. For Manjeev, the satisfaction of creating is the best feeling in the world, especially knowing that what you made can't be found anywhere else. Basically, we are all students who love creating, and we realize that in this modern world, fundamental knowledge in STEM areas and coding could be very beneficial to help you create. Whether you want to solve the climate change, send people to space, or maybe be the real world Tony Stark, STEM and coding is necessary. We understand that it might be difficult to get started. That is why we created Semitronics. Our main product is Semitronics Nano, a device equipped with lights, buttons, and sensors that you can code to do anything you want. It's so simple and fun to use. All you have to do is connect it to a computer and start programming by dragging and dropping colored blocks instead of typing lines of code. On top of our product, we also provide workshop, training, lesson plans, coding projects, tutorials, and online classes. Now roll the clip. Sami. Hey. Hello, Manjeev. Hi. And welcome to Patrick Nicholas, our youngest founder wow. yet. Wow. I don't know, guys, if you're seeing the comments in the chat, but basically it's all about genius. It's an impressive video. And the suspense you build at the end, really, really impressive. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I I know that your product is already available in Indonesia and soon will be available in Australia. So from what you already have done and seen, what is the fastest time somebody went from zero in robotics to I absolutely love it while using your product? Generally, we can do that with less than two hours. Uh, let me explain. Like, for example, like most of our students, they just got started with coding like they have no prior experience with coding and um, to give context like our students they are ranging from year four to year 12 students and they they don't know what is possible with coding the first time they meet us we would ask them what is coding and they would answer oh those programmers behind the screen writing thousands lines of code and then we ask them again like why do they do that what is uh, what are they making and they, they are quite unsure of what, what is possible with coding. So in the first couple of minutes, we will just give some instructions and explain stuff to them. They will just passively listen. But once they get started in making the very first project and they actually put what they had in mind, their ideas and their code, actually seeing it actually working, moving, showing lights or making sounds, it excites them very much. And then they start asking us questions back like, oh, does it mean the, 
the traffic lights I see every day, it works just like this. I can program them or maybe I could even make other stuff. And they have ideas that we actually, as founders, we never imagined before. So, and we can get to that point within just less than two hours. And a lot of people, they, a lot of them, they don't know that they're going to be excited with coding and we managed to make them excited. Amazing. Two hours from zero to STEM. Fantastic. So can you share a few tips for parents or kids who are new to robotics and coding? Um, yeah, well, firstly, we need to, they need to find something that interests them. It can be anything, like from a motivation from a movie, for instance. I got my motivation from movies like Avengers, Iron Man, and Spare Parts. So that could be, you can get an idea from them. Otherwise, we would recommend to check out our YouTube channel, Samitronics, and find our project that we did over there. And we will fill up more projects soon. And I'll hand it to Sam. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Our YouTube channel and website is a very good place to get started. Like we have a lot of projects there already available to build the excitement. Like you can go head over to samitronics.com as well. And on top of that, like what makes our platform really great is that because as, as someone who learned coding myself, like back in a few years ago, like I also struggle in learning how to code because it's sometimes it's really abstract. Like you cannot physically see what you're doing. And then what we want to do is like, you make it simple, as simple as possible to start creating projects. And that's why like you can really interact with um, your code, you can actually see what's going on with what you put on your screen. Yeah, that's that's the best way to get started for me. Sounds simple enough. So thank you, Sami and Manjeev. And I really want to wish good luck to Nicholas in his upcoming Olympics in informatics. Good luck, Nicholas. Over thank to Daisy. Thank you. I'm seeing some comments in the chat about at 19, I think I was still building sandcastles. Tomorrow I mentioned that. Don't worry, I think at 19, I was probably indulging in all that O week had to offer after 9 p.m. <laughs> all right, so next up we've got um, One Love Australia. Now, One Love is an anti-racism platform, which is very timely um, in the current environment. I think it was that moment when I saw actually my, my, my elder brother being hit in his face by a brick. And this is when I understand that probably I should start running now. It was too late. You know, I was, I was, I was put on the ground, I was tapped in my neck. You know, I had a very, very uncomfortable experience with that. And, and to be honest, for, for 15 years, I don't think I talked about it. You know, it's one of those things like, just let's pretend that it never happened. You know, just don't talk to me about it. Don't ask me about it. I'm fine. And I actually thought I was fine. That is the challenge about racism. It's not about the intention. It's not about what's being said. It's about someone being at the receiving end of it. How do you feel about it? So One Love Australia was founded in 2018 in response of Christchurch terror attack. Um, I wanted to, to do a concert, a benefit concert in Christchurch to show our love and support. I, I was asking around for people to help me with that, but there wasn't really many people who are willing to help. I don't think he'd ever organized a concert. Um, I certainly had never organized a concert. He was looking for help. He asked for some, some people who may be interested in giving me a hand with that. And that was the start of One Love Australia. You know, it's from that sort of Christchurch benefit concert in 2019. Myself and Joel working on it together is what kind of uh, laid the foundation of, of One Love Australia. After we've done the Christchurch uh, benefit concert, and one thing led to another, you know, we did a couple of speaking uh, engagement in schools. And from there, we started developing our anti-racism programs in schools. Teachers actually are not 
equipped or empowered to talk about racism or race relations. You know, that's a really, for us, that's a really scary situation. You know, we want teachers to feel empowered and positive about talking about racism in the classroom to kids uh, because it's an issue that affects a lot of them. You know, the you know, ANU study in, in 2017 says that one in three kids have experienced racism and social exclusion. We hope with, through the work that we do, we actually empower teachers to be able to have these conversations and in return help the students become the advocate for anti-racism in their communities. The vision that we have for One Love Australia is really focused on these future generations. We want to empower them so that they can be the change that they want to see in the world. We dream of a world, but there's no need for anti-racism education. That's not the reality right now. But that's where we're trying to get to. Joel, why did you say I can help? Uh, well, look, uh, I think um, my approach in this world has been is very simple. It's either if there, there are social issues uh, like racism, you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And, you know, when um, I've developed relationships in my life, and I have the option to help people do something that's, uh, that's always something if I'm in a position to do that, then I'll try and do that. And Jamal, could you tell me why you said yes to Joel? I'm sure that many people would think it's pretty odd that you've got a white co-founder. So, so what would you say to them? And um, why did you say yes to Joel? That's an interesting question, I would say. Um, well, <clears throat> I mean, to begin with, I think, I think it's, it's very intentional. You know, this is the exact same message that, that we're trying to send across, you know, when it comes to racism, um, it's not about black versus white or people of color versus white, you know. It's, it's you know, uh, someone like Joel, I think, is leading by example of, of how, how a white person, you know, can, can be a powerful ally, you know, and what role they can play. and and in fact, one of the reasons why I said yes to Joel was, you know, I'm hoping that will inspire other white people or people who might have concerns of, oh, should I be involved in this type of race relations conversations to actually step up and be part of it? And this is what I've seen already. So, yeah, this is it. I mean, Joel being involved, I think, he, he, you know, it's kind of us, you know, kind of walking the talk and having a white co-founder is something very intentional. Fantastic. Uh, I know that you're about to launch a, uh, a series of videos for uh, a, a training program for parents and teachers. So if you're a parent or a grandparent and you're wanting to start a difficult, start one of these conversations around racism, have you got any tips for them? Uh, absolutely. I'll take that one. Uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's really important to kind of educate yourself uh, when it comes to race, racism and race relations in general, you know, especially when, when talking to, to, to kids, I would say, or children or students in general, because, you know, it's one of those really important topics that if it's not really handled correctly in a way, you know, it could, it could really turn ugly to some extent. And when I say that is, you know, parents, teachers, even us as individuals, we need to educate ourselves like, about racism because, you know, we need to understand how do we navigate this difficult topic that we don't often talk about. We're not taught to talk about. So it's really important to educate yourself when it comes to racism. And that's what we're hoping to, to get out of this uh, online course that we're launching very soon to teachers. Fantastic. And I would encourage everybody to get educated and to keep an eye out for One Love Australia. Daisy. All right, thank you so much. And that was our last team, but we've got a couple more quick messages. One is a brief video from Sveta, who is also tuned in today, the founder I mentioned earlier, and a few messages from our startup community. Just before we play them, I quickly want to introduce Sveta because I think she's very humble. She's actually one of the top 
15 women in the world when it comes to artificial intelligence based on 1.5 million research papers. She stays in mostly in a lab in Geelong normally, which is, I guess, not working from home, which is at the moment. And she's also one of the scientists behind a company called Isatana, which recently listed on the ASX. So she's going to explain a little bit about why she founded Spark and how we've gotten to where we've gotten to today. So I think I uh, initially, I was just wondering why many of the people in my lab were not setting up companies and doing startups. And I thought, oh, maybe something is missing. They need to learn a little bit. So um, I just went off to Stanford and had a look at what was called Spark at uh, Stanford. And it was, of course, an amazing program with lots of resources and, you know, Silicon Valley at the doorstep. Um, so I tried to come and copy that in a way, in a very low key way. So I have to say that um, it has changed immensely over the years that I set it up. I mean, I set it up as a Facebook, Facebook group and just on, under the radar of the university, if you like. And um, essentially, it was just a little scrappy organization. I used to force people to come. I used to get all my friends to do the talks. And um, till, of course, I met Daisy, who came in and told me all the things that were wrong with it. And I said, she's hired, she can fix them. So from that day onwards, it's become a better organization and we've really grown into the professional outfit we are here today. We did have the components of all, this, all these programs even at start, but you know, they were very uh, in very sketchy form. And so I'm very proud of the whole team that's made this happen so far. Congratulations to all the teams uh, today and we're very proud of you and as you know you're a very special part of Spark for us and we look forward to not only you know what you're going to do here with us but as you progress through your lives in the future. Hi guys it's Ivan here I believe that you're having amazing time at Spark Deacon. Congratulations to the current cohort Samitronics, Juxaf, Lemonade, Go Kindly and One Love Australia big praise for the brave step that you've taken into the world of entrepreneurships. Congratulations to all the teams. Hi everyone, I would like to congratulate all the teams. Wish you all the best. Hey, congratulations to all the Spark teams for 2020. You're at the start of a very exciting journey and you're part of a really amazing cohort. It's really uh, wonderful, right, that such programs can continue in spite of the climate around us. And uh, that, that tells you a little bit about, you know, what entrepreneurship can, su can survive and thrive under all circumstances. And that's part of what makes startups, right? The never say die attitude, regardless of whatever, lockdown or COVID or whatever. So yeah, um, it is a bit strange, like it is for all of us, but um, you know, I'm sure that we'll all get through it and come out the other side. In terms of entrepreneurship, I use it every day at Deakin. I look for those moments where our students are struggling and I see them as opportunities to create really meaningful experiences. What I learned from entrepreneurship is that it's important to be curious, to be agile, to follow your dreams and make as many connections as possible. One thing I've learned about entrepreneurship that's been really helpful is that you should write your principles in pen and your business model in pencil. There's going to be times in the future where you're going to be flexible and you're going to change your idea, you're going to change how you make money, who your customer is, what role you play. But there's going to be some things that you're never going to change. And my suggestion is to work out where are we going to be unreasonable. It's a really powerful advantage. Two things what entrepreneurship has taught me. Number one is to persevere. It's to never give up, and to push through even when things got hard or impossible. And to never give up. And number two, I think entrepreneurship is not about ourselves. I think entrepreneurship is about giving back to other people. And I've seen enough life change, transform throughout my journey of entrepreneurships. So once again, congratulations to all of you and welcome to the world of entrepreneurships.
Awesome. Thank you so much to our mentor community. And I love that thing about writing your principles in pen and writing your business model um, in, in pencil. So those are the things that are constantly changing and deciding what you're going to be relentless about. And usually that's the problems that you want to solve. And that's what entrepreneurship is about. And that's where we started um, this evening. I just want to say a few more things. One is we want to announce the winners of the prize for the Go Kindly pillow um, and the wine, which will be for the wine, it's um, Melissa and Dash. And for the pillows, it's Yelena and Vincent. And Diletta uh, will, re oh, here we go. We've got your submissions on the screen. Team so efficient. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing those. And I, oh, Vincent, so cute. A little bit of your little one. It's adorable. Uh, we'll get those uh, prizes out to you. We'll get your addresses and we'll get those prizes out to you. And I quickly want to say a thank you to our judges this year who helped with selection of the team and spent many hours reviewing the 100 plus applicants. David Plumridge, who was one of the members of our cohort last year, uh, Kinneret Yuvani, um, Olga Hogan, and also Isaac Jeffries, as well as uh, Kevin Murphy, from D a member of the Deacon Executives, actually helped with a lot of the strategic support. And now the last sort of thought I want to uh, leave you with is you've heard our startups come together and share uh, what they're working on. I would love to know if you post in the comment box, what are you working on? There's a beautiful quote it's on the screen now. What is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life by Mary Oliver? And this is something that really drives us. So what is it that you're sitting on in terms of startups, entrepreneurialism, it could be creative side hustles because you know know where startups start. Canva, which is one of Australia's biggest startups now, started as just a, a small company designing yearbooks. Now it's one of the most globally used design platforms. Um, so I'd love you to share in the comments what is something that you are sitting on that you'd like to bring into the world. And as you do that, uh, you can see the details of the startups this year, it really does take a village to raise startups. And one of the principles upon which Spark Deacon operates and that we're founded is a sense of giving and selfless service. So we give, Deacon gives back to these founders. We give back to these founders with no expectation, except for that they pass that on and perpetuate that culture of helping another founder on their journey. So a big part of, of what we do is we rely on our volunteer mentors who help us and those who come and speak and share their knowledge. But also, everyone who's tuned in today, I encourage you to think about how you might be able to help. If any of the stories today for the startups resonated with you and you can think of a way of supporting, encourage you to reach out, but also think about your own ideas and what you plan to bring into this world when it comes to your creative and entrepreneurial journey. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we've really loved having you. And now I think we're going to finish with everyone on the screen and Eleanor loves music. So if you want to do a dance off, that's what Eleanor suggested. So we'll see each other off on a little bit of a dance off. Uh.